Hello, sports fans. Welcome to the Broadcast Booth. I'm Jason Aaron Goldberg, and this is Card Collecting Shenanigans. While you're here, hope you'll subscribe. It's Throwback Thursday, and you know what that means. Old stuff. Today, the Wayback Machine takes us back to 1996 to look at some commemorative Michael Jordan rookie card reprints and talk about the tie between Fleer and Marvel. In the dugout today, we've got The Mick, because again, uh, he was in the dugout yesterday and he's back in today because on this day in 1967, he hit his 500th homer. We've also got The Constitution in the dugout, the whole thing, uh, because on this day in 1787, delegates gathered in Philly to write our founding document. Uh, now, you're probably wondering why Darth Vader and Dick Tidra are sitting on the tarp. Well, the tarp is there, obviously, because we're not going to rip today. And it is George Lucas's and Dick Tidrow's birthday today. First up, Dick Dirt Tidro, one of the most spectacular mustaches in all of baseball history. Uh, I had wanted to try to get Dick into... Um, Raleigh and the Goose, but I just never really could find a slot because obviously he's got a very similar to Goose Gossage mustache, uh, but it is spectacular. Love both of these cards, uh, and so now I had the opportunity to get Dick on the show. That's a lot of Dick. Uh, so happy birthday, Mr. Dick Dirt Tidrow, born in 1947, the same year as my pops. Have him hang out there next to the MJ Olympic card. Now, Darth Vader is here. I don't have anything uh, related to Chewbacca, which is what I'm going to rant about here for a hot second. So in a stroke of synchronicity, last night I wind up watching The Rise of Skywalker. I found out when I was prepping today's episode that it was George Lucas's six, uh, 76th birthday today. Uh, but anyway, so while I'm watching The Rise of Skywalker, I'm getting near the end of the movie and I start to really, really feel for Chewbacca because it's the scene where he gets the news that Leia has passed and he breaks down. He like crumples to the floor and he's kind of crying and screaming and I got a little choked up and I'm thinking to myself, man, Chewbacca has had it rough. I mean, here's a guy, he's hundreds of years old. He's lost everything in his life. He's, you know, since childhood, He's taken from his family, right? So he's got no mother, no father, no siblings. He's out there alone as a slave. Uh, then he pairs up with Han Solo, and he gets freed, and they go through the Star Wars universe together. And then, you know, as we get into the new movies, he loses Han, and then he loses Luke, and now he's lost Leia. And sure, he's got his little ragtag group of Rey and, and all the new folks fighting, but for a guy that's hundreds of years old, they're really, really fresh, right? But still, he winds up saving the day again with a new group. They save the, um, uh, the galaxy. They defeat the Empire or the First Order or whatever you want to call it. Everyone scatters, right? They all go about their business. And what does Chewie get for all of this? Maz Katana, at the end of the movie, gives him the medal that he should have received at the end of, the new, of A New Hope. Right, So he's standing, if you go back to the end of A New Hope and they have the medal ceremony and Han and Luke and they get this medal by Leia and Chewie's standing right there and he even goes right then as if to say, dudes, the hell, like I didn't save the universe too? And he gets nothing. And so then we come all the way to the end of this series and Maz gives him the medal he should have received back then. What a rough go. Can we please have a little love for Chewbacca on George Lucas's 76th birthday? All right, Star Wars rant over, but I feel worth it. Let's take a look at the Jordan cards. Oh, yes, beauty. So these are really, really cool. Pick these up recently, 1995 e uh, total, combined, free shipping. Let's take a look at this one first. This is the Refractor Gold. There's two versions a refractor gold, and a brushed gold. And so most of us out there are never going to be able to afford a true Jordan rookie card. It's always been a little funny that the 86 Fleer is considered the Jordan rookie, and yet he was playing in 84. You know, he's in the NBA in 85, but he's hurt. All right, and so here's the brushed gold. And so I say, you know, if you're watching The Last Dance and you're feeling nostalgic for Michael Jordan cards, these are a steal. Uh, they're, they are really beautiful. Uh, the difference that I can notice in these is just the brush gold, you know, it looks brushed, looks like a little bit, you know, like gold flaking, and the refractor gold has a little bit more of a, like a sunshine street kind of look to the edges, but other than that, they are very, very similar. 
So I say if you're a collector, just for the love of collecting, right? Not everything is an investment. Uh, these are really awesome. I don't know anything about world-class grading. I didn't look into it at all, but I did look into PSA after I picked these up or like in the process of purchasing them. And PSA did grade a couple and then they actually, it's even on the PSA website, it says we've ceased grading these. And so my theory is probably like, I don't know when these got slabbed, um, but my guess is there's probably over 10,000 or more of these cards and they slabbed them to try to make it more profitable or something. And PSA was just like, we're not going to play your game, whoever you are. So you can't get them slabbed by PSA anymore, but they are beautiful. I would say they are tens, uh, sharp corners, very shiny, all that awesome stuff. Okay. So now why were they never released and what is the deal with Marvel? So in my research on this, I learned that in 1992, Marvel bought Fleer for $286 million. And it winds up being about 50% of their overall revenue. Uh, and so they're, they're growing. They're expanding. Marvel is really a powerhouse. They got a lot of rich guys behind the company, like, like individual rich, rich guys, right? Like guys with so much money, they don't even know what to do with it. Forbes top 10 kind of rich. And so in, Mar in 95, early 95, Marvel then buys Panini and Skybox, a couple smaller comic book companies, and Toy Biz. And Toy Biz then basically gets a free licensing deal to make Marvel Comics toys. Uh, they're making cards, but they're really, really overextended. Even though these super rich guys are playing around with money and moving a lot of money around, they're still dealing with debt. That's kind of how any company operates, and they are really deep in debt at this point. They're about $581 million in debt. And then in 96, they're still trying to grow and grow and grow. And Marvel announces Marvel Studios, which is kind of what we know of today, uh, to make movies for the characters that wound up being what the Marvel Universe is today. Because even back then, right, Marvel had already sold the rights to Spider-Man and X-Men uh, and the Fantastic Four, which were their most popular characters. And so they couldn't really, you know, they're trying to make movies their own way. But it's not working, and they finally they declare bankruptcy. And so there we are in 1996 when these are supposed to come out. Marvel declares bankruptcy. That means its subsidiaries declare bankruptcy. That means these babies never see the light of day. But here we are now, and you can get them with ease. $20, totally worth it in my opinion. All right, so then in 98, dealing with bankruptcy, restructuring, all that sort of stuff, Marvel sells Fleer for $30 million bucks. And they're, they're making cards still. Basically, that $30 million sales to a father-son duo. Uh, I don't really know much about them, but they're still kind of making cards. Uh, but then in 2005, they stopped making cards altogether. In July 2005, Upper Deck winds up buying Fleer for $6.1 million. They had actually offered over 30 a year prior. So that tells you how bad kind of the industry is doing for them. And so Upper Deck in 2006, starts making Fleer branded products, but essentially just for that one year. And then in 07, Upper Deck makes the last of the Fleer branded products, and you can't get any more Fleer, as far as I know, anymore. And so there you go, a little quick history on why Marvel was tied to Fleer, or Fleer tied to Marvel, and why these cards never saw the light of day for consumers uh, in 1996. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below uh, with a, uh, to a New York Times article that is really chock full of great information on all of this. If you wanna go give it a read, it's pretty interesting. Uh, so there you go, hope you enjoyed the episode. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought. Looking forward to reading those comments. Slam that like button, make sure you're subscribed, tell all your friends, and I'll see you next time in the broadcast booth.